We're all bystanders all of the time in our everyday and working lives and there's a very important role for bystanders in that quite often cultures that are supportive of sexual harassment seem supportive because nobody's speaking out. So while there may be one or two people whose behaviour is unacceptable in the workplace, it's difficult for them to know how unacceptable that behaviour is if nobody's ever calling them out on it. Nice one, son. Hey, just sharing the love, people. Just sharing the love. <laughs> you know, when I started working here, it was topless calendars. I thought we moved on, but obviously not. You really are pathetic. No, seriously, mate. It's not on. Oh, what's up with you, Mildred? You're not getting any. <laughs> and what if that was your sister and some guy was sending news to his mates? Think about it. You'd want to kill him. Grow up. Bystanders can intervene in a number of different ways, and the most effective approach will obviously depend on the situation. For example, using humour can help to reduce tension and make it easier to get your point across. Bringing it home stops the person from distancing themselves from the impact of their actions or dehumanising their victims. We're friends, right? Appealing to someone as a friend shows that you care about the way they are perceived by others. That's just weird. Giving normative feedback can help put unacceptable behaviour in context. There's safety and power in numbers. So, intervening as a group gives you a strong basis for action and can be particularly effective with someone who displays a pattern of behaviour. 